Cassette number five from The Waiting on God, held in Jeffersonville, Indiana, September 1976. We continue with the Tuesday evening session, September 28th. Now it's time to take up the offering. Just told me it's time for the offering. <laughs> Hallelujah. See, I never was able to do this until this the last year or two or three, whatever it has been. Never been able to. But since the, our responsibilities are now for many people, in various parts of the country, the Lord has allowed me this privilege after walking with him 30-some years to again uh, take up offerings. Responsibility is great upon us, and it's a miracle of the Lord. We need thousands of dollars. And when it is here, we just simply pray and find out what to do, what God wants, wills, to do with it. He wants it to some go to the widows, the orphans, or, or to the ministers or evangelists or to the needy, to those out of work. Distribution can be made to the saints or to those as the Holy Spirit directs. Does anybody want to praise the Lord? Your heart's bubbling over with joy. Say that again, Brother Roger, so the folk over here can hear. That's encouraging because this son uh, uh, is doing his best to walk with Jesus, do Jesus' will, and the Lord led us to him a few years ago because of Brother Sister Morgan and my brother Terrence. We found him. Terrence tried to get him with us in 1957. It came to pass about eight years ago, this December. And he's been striving to walk with the Lord. And uh, he is in the church for 33 years. Those of you that are new here, the church 33 years and never had an operation of Jesus in his heart in his life until God had me to call him that night at 11 o'clock. That's right. And my heart, when he told me the revelation that God had given him, my heart began to swell. It just seemed like it, it, my, it seemed like my chest would explode. It seemed like there was a football in there and someone was blowing it up or a basketball or something. My chest kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And I said, brother, something's happening inside of me. I never had that operation, never had anything like it before. But the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit of Jesus. confirmed in my heart what the Lord was showing you. Right. So that I, right. I would know that uh, you wasn't just talking. Right. Because uh, it must be this way. It must, must be that way. And we found out later why the Lord delayed you in calling me when you, yes. until the Lord said when to call me. Right. See, he knows when to call. Yes. And the Lord uh, knows how to work this. I'm thankful that you obey the Spirit and, and, and do exactly what the Holy Spirit tells you. Grace. I'm thankful for the things that the Lord has shown me today. And oh, my. It's been marvelous. Well, Jesus has shown me. Little, little nuggets out of God's great treasure chest. I tell you, it's been marvelous. Just little things, just little glimmers of here and there. It, like an ever-ready scribe, bringing old and new things out of, your out of God's treasure chest. I tell you, it's marvelous. Oh, and the, what God's trying to weave in his tapestry of love, I tell you, it's, it's tremendous. But I know I can't see very much, but I'm thankful for what he showed me. Oh, it's so precious. Oh, yeah. Really, I'm thankful. I'm trying to be thankful. Oh, yeah. oh, but yeah. I, yet I know I'm yeah. not being thankful enough. I just feel like I'm coming so short. Oh, I am too, I you know. I want to be thankful. Oh, More thankful. I'm coming short, too, of gratitude. Appreciation. I just want to be, yes. but I'm, I'm striving thankful. myself to be faithful. I'm thankful. <laughs> but I'm coming short, it seems. That's where I feel. Yes. But I'm thankful. But praise the Lord, we're pressing. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <can> tell it. <laughs> yes, we're rejoicing. Amen. Yes. Yes. The and the fellowship that the Lord has given us allowed us to be in awe through the Holy oh, Spirit. I never dreamed, I never dreamed that I 
in my highest expectations. I couldn't comprehend what God had had for us. Really, I, I didn't. I couldn't. It was so great that words uh, fall short. Human words, human language, fall always falls short of the Holy Spirit realm of what the Lord has shown us and what he's helped us and blessed us with. And he's, he's performed the very thing that he said he would do. He yes. said he would guide us and yes. direct us, and yes, Jesus helping, yes. he's done that. Yes, sir. And it's even greater than I ever dreamed. Praise the Lord. It's been marvelous. And it's been over seven years. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And it's been, ever. it just gets better. Praise the Lord. When it we prayed better. the other day, you know, Virginia's been so poorly, and you've had her in the yeah. hospital. She was ten just times. ten times this year. Uh, this year, she's been in the hospital ten times, and so we prayed you and I. And I said, "We'll just bring her on. She'll be as well here as at home. God helping, and we'll trust she'll be better here with all the afflictions and so on." But uh, you see what we'd have missed if Jesus hadn't had us to tell you to come. I know. I, I tell you, it, it, it's people, because of grace we can make it. They don't on. know. People don't know what I have. A, had to go through to, no, to get here. To get here. <laughs> but I'm thankful oh, no. that the they Lord didn't want, they didn't want you to leave there. Oh no. No, the fact no. they didn't want you to leave at all. Well, I I feel more. I feel uh, that I can't tell you. You know, many of you know, when you work in things of the world, things of the earth, uh, when you've had a taste of the kingdom of God. Nothing else in this whole world satisfies. Nothing. nothing. There's yeah. nothing that even compre can even come up close to it. Nothing. So it's 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 wonderful to come and be with the servant and be with all you precious ones uh, that are trying to obey God. It's so wonderful to get away from the world because the world, when you work with the world every day. Uh, it's you, you just really have pray to press pray. and pray. pray and trust and Jesus will help you. Yes, but uh, I'm thankful to be in a place where people, everyone uh, is rejoicing and you know you don't you see a different realm. You see different values when you work with the world every day. Their values are with what they can see. But I'm thankful for the things that cannot be seen, but they can feel them. Sometimes, Lord helping. Sense of realize but, uh, it. I'm thankful the joy. for the, the unseen hand, the guiding guidance of God's unseen hand. The joy of this fellowship. Oh, it's wonderful. <laughs> I didn't know it could ever be this great. But and I'm you were in the church 33 years. Oh, yes. Yes. But the Lord uh, privileged me to learn more uh, by some time, by just being with you for, what was it, three years then? Uh, he showed us there in St. Louis, yes, yes. out there in a the park under a tree. That's right. <laughs> yes, that's right. It was precious. That was a wonderful experience. Oh, my. I never, I knew that the Lord was helping us, but uh, he, sometimes he tells you how much, but we didn't <laughs> press to find out no, how no, much. But he, his goodness to revealed it to us. Yeah. I'm thankful for what, what Jesus has done. It's, all, it's been all, all because, because of the leadership Lord of Jesus. the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit of the God. faithfulness of God, yes, and, yes. The, and with Jesus helping, I tell you, it's been marvelous. Yes. It's been marvelous. Wow. Uh, it's, uh, it's wonderful to be with you because you live it, you try to live it every day, and, and you're doing it, not just preaching about it and going out and doing something else. See, I know how that is, but when you live with someone, you know how that is. Because when you're with them through hard times yeah. and through little tests and trials, we uh, it uh, if there's anything in there, why it'll come out. <laughs> but I'm thankful. I've never been disappointed by God's grace in this man. Oh, by Lord, God's I'm grace. Through Jesus Christ, help me, help me, help me, deliver, deliver. By the, God's help grace in this oh, family, I, in the whole family. Oh, I tell you, we're in debt to Jesus. All of you. To God, I just Father, love all of you. Because of the blood for your spirit. <laughs> It, but Jesus has to help. He has to do, he has all, to this. do it. Do all this. Yes. Oh, I, we're so in debt. We got to call to God right now and say, Jesus, it's all because of Thank Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit Thank of God. You, Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> oh, we're crying to give God <laughs> all the Jesus. honor and all the praise. Yes, sir. Oh, how he's how serious, how oh, precious, my. how wonderful. See, this fellowship is so wonderful. I call him on the phone. It gets in his heart and jumps over there. And I'll say, I'm sorry to take up your time. He said, oh, brother, you're not bothering me. <laughs> Oh no, my! He said, "This is a helping me." Yeah, and we have wonderful times right. in fellowship. True, true. Talk, Brother Hill. We get in the meeting, lasts for thirty to sixty minutes. Yep. Oh, yeah. 
Right on the telephone. <laughs> Can't hardly quit. No. No. Others here, too. Get in the meeting on the telephone. Wonderful. Praise the Lord. Wonderful. It's wonderful. God bless on the telephone just like it is here. Oh, yes. 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 Miles apart, but oh, yeah. the Holy Spirit the yes. back and forth. Just operates in the heart. Isn't back and forth. So sweet. The I, kingdom of God is within you, Jesus said. Jesus. Within. It's right inside. I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy either. Witness, but I'm oh, thankful. I just pray to be faithful. I don't grieve the Holy pray Spirit. For me too. I brother. love everybody as Jesus loves me. Yeah. It's the greatest faithful. privilege in the world to love everybody as He yeah. loves us and to be cleansed. See, I can tell. So I can tell. That's not just talk with you. See, I can tell it. I, by God's grace, I can tell it. When you say you love your enemies as much or more, I tell you, I have the witness on more. I tell you, when they start persecuting you, Jesus flows love through you. Oh, yeah. See, I've been with him in prayer at night, family <laughs> prayer. See, he pray for his enemies. I'd hear him pray for Jack. I heard him pray for Jack and why before he ever was saved. Oh, long, oh, long, long time oh, ago. Yeah. And years. others, years. others that uh, were on their way. Uh, yeah. Jesus yeah. prayed yeah. through you in family prayer. I remember it. Yeah. Jesus helping in Florida, yeah. different places. Amen. But uh, I'm thankful for consistency. It's wonderful. Yeah, that's so encouraging. Appreciate it. Edwin can remember me praying for the girls to have companions way back a long years ago. Joseph Bishop said the first day I was with him for about three to five hours and preached to him, shared with him. He said that that's what we were praying about that day is uh, for our companions and for their husbands to be saved wherever they were and whenever we found them. Years ago. Well, that's a wonderful privilege, isn't it, to trust. Hallelujah. Now, that didn't hurt anything, is it? Just to talk here about the kingdom. You see, about the kingdom of God within you. Because every once in a while, if you listen, he'll jump over into your heart. Every once in a while, the Holy Spirit may touch your heart a little. Yes, this is what happens in the kingdom of God. The Holy Spirit just comes over to your heart a little bit. John, son John. Praise the Lord. Your heart is really moving. Amen. Well, just come up and talk to us a minute. Praise the Lord. It's awful hard for me to come up here. Well, it's wonderful to have you. Because my wife knows that I like to be down there real quiet. Oh, yeah. Oh, but, yes. Uh, I want to praise the Lord for this uh, this word tonight. It was so wonderful to my heart. I feel so refreshed now. Ooh, I just feel wonderful. That helps me. I feel better now I than I have for days. That helps me. Good. Oh, I just feel strong. You I feel do? Light. You feel, feel lighter. The heaviness, the density has left my body. The oh. suffering left More my help head. is coming to you. Praise the Lord. Yeah, more help is coming. God is going to help him. The Holy Ghost tells me more help is coming to him. And I saw him. Oh, he's married to our baby daughter, so he's a son to us. See, I call him son John. He calls me dad. And we live close together. Oh, yeah. That really, that really moves me. It moves oh, you. Really what were you telling him was moving me. Oh, it was getting, say what he was saying was getting right inside my heart there. See, he's documented what, I, what Roger was talking about. Uh, see, your fellowship really stirred oh, me for oh, years. Oh. Uh, that helps well, me. When I was first converted, just to see you two in fellowship, <laughs> I get so happy. I get happy over your fellowship that God was giving you two. Then if it were happening to me, oh, and no I was wonder. So He's going to pour a lot into you with a spirit like oh, that. I don't know how he could do any more. I don't know oh, what I'd do with it. You're just starting. Oh, it'll be wonderful after a while, I'm sure. God's great. <laughs> you know, any spirit that rejoices like that, there's some wonderful things ahead. Amen. Did you get that? Oh, yeah. See, he was more, he was just thrilled. Uh, we were privileged to have such fellowship. He has longed and longed for God to send the money in. And see, there is money somewhere that I could have this fellow with me all the time. That was on my heart. <laughs> and uh, but he knows where that money is. I don't know where it is. But if we had about 15,000, 20,000, I could have him with me all the time, have him near me, where we could talk and commune. And this has been his burden for I don't know how many years. That's when my heart really began to operate. See, his heart's got a light, and there's a light in mine right there now. Yeah, the heart right in there. If only. Yeah. Say, Lord, who has the burden here tonight? Yeah. Says, what are you displaying here? You say offering, and then this fellowship. Oh. Suddenly the offering stops, and it's like you had all afternoon. <laughs> you know, you're just standing here talking like none of us were here. Like you're just sitting down for a long chat. Oh. And there's such rest in my heart. Yeah, Jesus, have... what are you trying to show us? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Or, uh, waiting after waiting, God has uh, made this known. One time when Roger cried here, cried.
cried as he was sharing with us the longing of his heart what a crushing it was to go back to the factory now that's important that's significant but I thought Lord Jesus if I had ten thousand dollars that uh, I could just share now what kind of investment would that be I said this isn't ice cream this isn't frosting on the cake oh my oh for a servant who's called of Jesus been walking by faith and loneliness all these years Wow, this is this is a crust of bread. It's not even a Oh, you're talking loaf. right. This is just a dry oh. crust. This is just Woo! the beginning oh, yes. of what you need to live. Oh, my, I've been looking for it oh, all you my need life. It. Well, see, you I'm need looking. it. If you don't have it, it, we'll die. Well, see, if we you don't it. get it... See, we've got to have yes, Jesus. See, if you don't get it, you'll not have the strength to make it to the calling. Oh, yes. Well, you might, but God's grace, because it's serious. But, oh, see, you'll be rested. See, you need Roger. Oh, you need Roger. Oh, what what would he be there each morning? Oh, what? <laughs> oh, if he could be there each day just to be with you. Oh, just to be quiet with you. Well, you see, I've not, I've not seen such fellowship in, in this this company that God has given you through the year. The, the operations of the Holy Spirit sometimes are just almost identical. Just like one hand has been laid on the other. It's so beautiful. I wish the people could see what's happening inside. <laughs> oh, if they could. Oh, if it was these dear ones. Oh, aren't we unworthy of this? See what was on my heart down there. I said, uh, oh, Jesus, it's too big for me, but if I could be used to be just to encourage two people who had $10,000 apiece tonight to stand in this company tonight and say, by God's grace, I want to share $10,000, one half of Roger's salary for a year. I want to share the other half. I want to invest my life in the, oh, the fellowship, the food that both of you need in this high call in the kingdom. And when I saw that, I tell you, my heart just started moving and I got lower and lower. So, Jesus, of course, when you looked at me, you could tell something well, yes, was going on. I saw something was taking place with you. This says I saw your face and your eyes. Oh, boy. <laughs> and you know, see, this is too big a responsibility for me because I don't say things good. I get so excited and forget what I started out to say. But I well, think I'm you so do pretty well. For the Holy Spirit. But wouldn't Praise it be wonderful? Lord. If people, I remember the night in Phoenix when you started talking about getting on the front row, and that operated my heart similar. Before I knew it, I was up, I was up like a, a boxer who didn't know much, but he was really ready to go. I said, "He's not just talking." The Holy Ghost was in my heart, and yeah. I tried to encourage them to the front. Yeah. Right then. Yeah. Right oh, then. Oh, it was so in my heart that yeah. I thought, surely people would see this, but Jesus, not yes, me. Sir. And I just waited for him to move, and no one moved. No one came. No one moved at all. In fact, the spiritual one the next night. Oh, the happened. next night. Oh, and right in the mixed exhortation, you were just at rest. Yeah. You said, oh, yes, there's no telling what God will do. He could give gifts or heal or anything. Well, the next night, I was curious to see what happened. And everyone moved back. Yes, the devil fought so hard. Precious people had sat right there in the second or third pew, sat way in the back. It was like a cloud over them. But after the service, you stayed, you stayed late and down... Down, I said everyone, I, I forgot the one exception. Down to the front came this precious woman, the only one who had moved forward. The only one who heard. And she had a little request. She didn't want to bother you with it. And she finally came over and asked a request that you prayed for. And she started to leave and said, you sit down just a second, sister. I, I can't let her see your hands. Just, what is your name? She told her name. I can't remember her name. He said, sister, receive thou the gift of faith. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Jesus was at work where I didn't want to move. And she started to leave. Just a minute, sister. Receive thou uh, the gift of discerning of spirit. The only one that heard the exhortation, not because of me, but because it was you were preaching what Jesus was telling you from heaven. The one that believed. You see, God spoke through you, forgot it. You didn't even know you said it. Oh, God could give gifts. The one that believed. Right down here. Through two sacred gifts of the Holy Spirit. Oh, that touched my heart on two sacred gifts. Isn't that wonderful? That so, operated with me right here. So I'm still trying to get back to my seat, but I sure wish it'd be wonderful if one or two individuals or four or five could could hear how important it is for you and Roger to be together. To have the fellowship day in and day out. See, there's no telling. Uh, he just doesn't want Roger, I know that. But wouldn't it be wonderful to have a company of five or ten with you all the time? just to do God's will, just to wait together, pray together. There's no telling what God could do if he could have just what he wanted. Praise the Lord. Well, 
Hallelujah. Steve opened up. Oh, I'm still waiting. Wouldn't it be wonderful? Five or six jump up. It should be wonderful. Yeah. Thank you for this freedom. Thank you, Lord. I also observed that, uh, <laughs> you know, truth, truth is like uh, sometimes when a light shines off a piece of metal, there's a, a ray that goes far beyond where the metal ends. Yeah. And truth is like that. And it's easy for the youngster to see truth and take it up real fast and build the, build the, the building up where there's no support. And like Noah, fought, he didn't support it. I was so thankful that uh, the ark that God's trying to build through you is so supported with gentleness and tenderness all around. You've been so gentle with us tonight, so tender. I just felt love all the time. That's what James came up and oh. told me. Such sweetness. I'm so indebted to Jesus for that. Such sweetness. That's sure. what I'm really... I'm sure I'm glad. So I'm sure that. glad I found... God helped me to find you and James, you see. Jack. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Very great. Yes. Very great. He prayed for you long, long ago when you were a little boy. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for this freedom. Praise the Lord. It's sure a joy to be with you. Heavy with it. Praise the Lord. Now, his heart was throbbing. I looked down there, and he was just ready to go. I saw it right away. I didn't know what he was on. I found out pretty quick. Isn't it marvelous how God works like this? Amen. Oh, we're in death of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> uh, everyone who's on the King's Highway is very happy. Amen. Really? Very happy. Very delighted. You're living in the carnal nature. You're disturbed. You're living in the spiritual man, you're singing, making melody in your heart of the Lord. Surely it's precious how Jesus works, isn't it? it? Certainly is. Well, we're in debt to the Lord. We didn't know this was occurring, of course. But praise the Lord. Yes. See, this brother was up first, but you go right ahead. He yes. can go ahead. Absolutely. You go ahead this time. No, I get a little check. Yes, he's to go. Praise Thank the you. Lord. I appreciate that, Jerry. We'll just have him speak. Uh, isn't it marvelous? The Holy Spirit said, wait just a minute to the servant. This precious one is standing uh, for some little time. And Jerry gets up. And the Lord said, just wait. See how wonderful that is? Oh, we ought to be happy about that. Amen. About little things. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Uh, it was kind of in my heart, and I don't really know uh, exactly the direction, the leading of the Holy Spirit. I'm just uh, striving to know what he'd have me to do. I find it a joy to, to try to press toward the mark yes, for the prize, is. the high yes. calling. Yes, it is a joy. I, I don't I don't think I have ten thousand dollars. I don't I don't oh, think no. I do. No, you wouldn't have. But uh, no, if but the, you see if the Lord would witness and, and give the direction that this precious brother here and I I don't know if I've ever hugged him or not, I'd sure appreciate the privilege of doing that. Uh, if he was to witness and, and give direction that that he's to be with you in this ministry, well, it would be a joy for me. I believe it would be an honor to, to write out a little check every week and just send it to him or, or to the office or wherever it might be. I don't know exactly maybe what that check would be. Uh, if the Lord would give me direction, I'd just trust him. Or uh, maybe it'd be varying amounts. I don't know. But it would be a joy. I want to share that. Praise the Lord. Well, and, we're uh, dead to Jesus. I, I want his direction. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, you just trust, and he will help us. Praise the Lord. Yeah, just trust. You're willing. You see, that's the yes. main thing. Oh, I, I want to oh, do yeah. that. Oh, well, we're so unworthy of this. We're floored. Wonderful. Rumble to the floor below. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you for speaking. Uh, we'll have Jerry speak to Jesus. Usually it has always been God speaks to those in hearing distance. When we got married, we had two cars, and we sold one of them because Jesus helped us. Yeah. And after we paid off the debt we had on that car, we have a certain amount of money that we put in the bank. And, and by God's grace, if it's his will and the Lord's dealing in my heart, I'd like to give that that we have in the bank. And it's a uh, little over $2,000. It's not 10000 but it's a little over 2000 And I, I believe that... Uh, uh, that Jesus wants us to do this. The Lord help him. Jesus. 
at least he's working in my heart some way. If he doesn't want that, he wants something else. So thank you, praise the Lord. We feel humble. Thank you. I'm, I'm, we're willing to yes, do so it. Lord. That's so precious. Yeah. So precious, Jerry. Isn't the Lord wonderful? Yes. Truly is. We're grateful to him. All right, we started to take an offering a while ago, but we haven't uh, been able to get very far, but we've had a good time trying, waiting here. <laughs> you know, when the Lord does it, uh, he takes sometimes a long time, and while he's taking the long time, we find out who we are, all of us. You've just been finding out who you are. Everybody here in the last 10, 15 minutes, you've been finding out who you really are. If you didn't know before, you do now. You found out one thing. Whether you have the spirit of submission or the spirit of resentment. You just all learned that. And they come out of two different lives. Well, I'm so thankful that uh, God gives me strength. And such joy here tonight. Because we've been standing most of the time since 7 o'clock. And if I'm with my wife and we're together somewhere, I can't stand only about five or ten minutes. Just can't hold my legs, just won't hold me up. Oh, I just hurt. Let's see here. Soon be, soon be 11 hours in the sanctuary. Today. I stood here most of the time and used my voice most of the time. And I'm trying to thank Jesus for that, because I know that's beyond man. Can't do that. I'll just enjoy something out here with my legs and say, well, you got to sit down. <laughs> and uh, God is, you see, if we're faithful, he will not fail. And even when it's difficult, he's seeing whether or not we're faithful, all of us. How we respond. And uh, it does everything well. We never know when he's going to work and pour out his spirit but always be grateful, regardless of what comes or goes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Isn't it, isn't it a joy? It truly is. Thank you, Jesus. Today has been a, a very fast, uh, rapid experience. If tomorrow God works, leads as he only can, it will be a wonderful day trusting him and we want to praise him for this we're endeavoring to learn how to give ourselves away to Jesus to wait upon God that he may bring us into his purpose into oneness and Jesus said that they all may be one as the father and I are one as in the 17th chapter of St. John now God has reviewed and renewed this to my mind and I want to read just a little portion to you of Jesus' words himself for we're dismissed. Neither pray I for these alone but for them also which shall believe on me through their word that they all may be one, verse 21, as thou Father art in me and I in thee that they also may be one in us that the world may believe that thou hast sent me of the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one as we are one. I in them, thou in me, that they may be perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved them, and hast thou hast loved me. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which thou gavest me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. These verses are concerning all his church, his people. And you are included if you're born again. When he said, I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth, neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. That includes everyone that has ever lived. That will hear. Includes everyone. See, he's praying for us. See, when he prayed that prayer, he was praying for us here. So we all may be one. And I'm convinced it has seldom been done since Pentecost. And 
the Lord must lead it in every way. He must arrange it, but if hearts are willing to surrender, hearts are willing. And the real evidence is his love, is his kingdom. To love as he loved, that is the evidence of the king himself living in you and living in me. And it works. It's real. So I'll keep crying that. Keep declaring this. And it's very serious. Just think, whenever a body of people are willing to pay the price, the kingdom will come. In seconds or less. And I get it on less. The instant. Just take the responsibility of the whole church over the earth when they come before judgment and they haven't been willing to pay the price to come to oneness as the Father and the Son. Look what it's going to mean in eternity. It's great. You see, if the, church, if the people don't realize this, but now we realize it. Jesus said it. He prayed it. He's given us the revelation. See, I, I, why it's been told in books about becoming one. I'm not talking about one in structure. I'm talking about one in inwardly. I'm not talking about a building out here. I'm talking about an indwelling. We're in individuals are one within as Jesus and the God of eternity are one. And then the kingdom. Whew. The kingdom of God draws all men. You don't have to have a program. He just draws them in from every direction. Oh, he does it. He performs it. It's his. The difficulty through the ages has just been men, women, were rebellious and stubborn, prayerless, neglectful, disobedient. Love the world more we love God. We love what we want to do more we want to love what He wants. So that's the way many have walked through the ages. And we're pleading it's for eternity that we will simply allow Him to have first place. Cleanse us. Now you may have to hear this many, 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 many times before it actually registers with you. You may have to hear this, even though you've been in the church 50 years. You may have to hear it over and over and over and over and over and over. I'm not the end of the overs yet. Before you can perceive it in the spirit, in your heart. So we're trusting. And it can be in second or less. He said it can be less, if you'll all hear me. He tells me it can be less than a second. If everyone here will hear. Praise his precious name for his precious love and the holiness of God, his fellowship, his word, his truth. His peace. And this waiting upon God doesn't teach us how to wait before him. It may be that we're to love someone here. But I'm trusting that you will learn, that we will learn together and be encouraged and be strengthened and build up in the sacred faith of God. This is far more important than you ever dreamed it was. At your highest comprehension. Praise the Lord. All right, we will have the closing prayer unless there is a special leading in the Holy Ghost. When I go to the congregation, Reverend Daniel Light, the Holy Spirit operates in my heart about thee. Coming and praying. Have you been encouraged today, my precious brother? Yes, I have. Certainly have. I'm so thankful. <laughs> oh, I can tell that. And he knew. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, Jesus, thank you. And he knew in his heart. See, Jesus, when I would go over the congregation, he would tell me, Jesus, here is the servant that was to pray. And it's in my heart now. Jesus, tell the Father I am very thankful.
Unto thee, O Lord, do we lift up our voice. O my God, I trust in thee. Let us not be ashamed. Let not our enemies triumph over us. Let none that wait upon thee be ashamed. O God, these words of the psalmist mean a little more something to us tonight than perhaps they ever have before. We thank you, O Holy Spirit, for divine surgery, realizing that you must help to heal, that often along with cleansing comes a purging. Our Father, we hardly know what to say, even as we approach thee in prayer, asking thy benediction upon these hours together, because in each heart, as you speak, we know what you have performed in us, and may every heart, O God, be open to thy benediction. O Lord, how could we ever begin to give you proper gratitude and to express the quality of thanks that's called for? Some of us, O God, who've been privileged to share in a few waitings, have never ceased to be amazed that no two sessions are the same. And what we have shared today, O oh God, has been unlike anything we've ever experienced. And yet how we need what we have received. Father, if, as you've told us, if there are ears of faith, and there are, I trust, O oh Lord, that we have had them tuned in. I pray, O oh God, that we have been on the proper frequency and that what we have received may reverberate in our souls and the vibrations may they never cease to shake us to the very foundations, O oh God, until the crooked is made straight, the rough places plain, and every valley exalted and mountain and hill brought low that truly it might be said that the way of the Lord is prepared and straight in the desert is made a highway for our God. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Beginning the morning session on Wednesday, September 29th.
The first part of the message, The Great Supper, was shared by Rev. Helm at this time. This and the second portion, preached in the afternoon session on Wednesday the 29th, are included in their entirety on cassette number 6. We continue now with the afternoon session on Wednesday, September 29th. Occasionally, the Lord gives a vision. He said, where there are no visions, the people perish, or they're perishing. Occasionally, the Lord gives a vision. The only way you can discern a true vision of God is by the witness of the Holy Spirit. Otherwise, there is no way to discern it. But always when it is of Jesus, of God, the Holy Spirit witnesses. Something may sound good, but will not be of the Holy Spirit. It may sound logical, but it's not of the Holy Spirit. It may look beautifully in certain areas, but may not be of the Holy Spirit. But when he gives a vision, it is always inspiring. And uh, one of our precious ones had a vision. And I usually do not mention it, but this precious one that he gave it to doesn't talk very much. And uh, seldom talks any time in any of the waitings. And uh, so I'm going to ask Leon to come up here and tell you what he saw. Now, he was at our house some years or so ago, and, and he was sitting right over here, and we got in a happy meeting. The glory of the Lord came down, and we got to exhorting, praising God, and well, it was time for them to go home, so they went out. But he ran back in. He said, Brother Helm, I just couldn't, I just couldn't leave. I, I just had to share something with you. But he said, while you were talking, I saw the angel of the Lord right above you. You could see him. That really encouraged me. But uh, God gave him a vision. I think in the last service or two, last night, I believe it was, and uh, it was his pastor told me about it, it encouraged my heart, so I knew if uh, you would share this, it would surely, people would surely want to give Jesus the glory, surely want to praise the Lord and look to the Lord. And uh, the reason we share this is, is to inspire every person here to actually give himself away to God and walk with him. Yeah. Yeah. If we can get every person here, there's very few, you know, wonderful people, but I mean to give ourselves away to God and really do His will rather than our own plan. And I trust this will inspire us to do God's will. Well, Brother Helms was uh, praying yesterday, and uh, he, uh, the Lord uh, laid on to him his heart that there was a hundred and some that wasn't here that was supposed to have been here. Uh, God gave me a vision of Brother Helms he was, he was facing the east. He was carrying a lamb in one arm, and he had a staff in the other. And I knew his brother Helen was so plain. He was wearing a white robe. He was facing the east. And as far as I could see in the back was sheep. A whole flock of them, just as far as I could see. But the most magnificent thing of the whole thing is in the next flash, the skies opened up. And there was Jesus with his hands outstretched towards Brother Helms, and it just thrilled me. We just got to praise the Lord for that. Praise his name. Oh, my. So indebted to Jesus, so indebted to Jesus. Oh, we're so indebted to Jesus. So indebted to Jesus. So indebted to Jesus. I found out <clears throat> that Sister Hubbard's heart was stirred up. In the last night's meeting. She didn't know hardly what to do. Well, I don't know what it is, but it sure stirred my heart when I heard that. When the pastor, the shepherd up there, said, say, one of my sheep, the Lord, laid something on them. And uh, I don't know whether Jesus wants to, to hear it or not hear it, but we're mighty thankful God revealed something to her heart and uh, also touched my heart. Uh, very much. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Grateful to God for it. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I believe it's all right, Sister Jean, to come. 
and uh, to the Pope here and share it. Roger, God told me to get Roger. And he said, we've got to get these messages on tape. I said, really? Oh, he says, we've got to do it. I said, well, all right. And he'd work and work, and the tape recorder would quit, and there would break, and his, the tape would roll back, and just the awful struggle, it was over and over and over. He says, oh, God surely wants this, because the devil is fighting so hard. He just kept it up and kept it up. Get home, Virginia starts, he'd start taping. <laughs> Glory to God, hallelujah. <laughs> Praise to you, <Jesus>. God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Glory to God. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord to my heart. <laughs> I know, I can't. That's, 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 that's so true. That's so wonderful. With him. Praise God. Glory to the Jesus. Because I've just got there. See, we wouldn't have, we wouldn't have Jean and her family because she prayed for years for Leon and the family numbers of years and he said we've got to get to his sermon on tape and so in Oregon he'd work various places for Lowell, Oregon outside of Portland and Tosk and I and he'd work in Clearwater, Florida and he'd work and work down there and we'd get to the next meeting in Parker and we'd get to, he said I've got to get these sermons on tape I said all right that's fine Virginia would type them and she'd get them, and she, he'd hear in the other room, oh, she'd get so happy in there, and she'd be either laughing or crying sometimes, and she says, oh, Roger, I'm getting more out of it, I believe, or as much as I did when I heard it first, maybe more. More? more? <laughs> and so she was so happy when she'd tape these little messages that we felt so utterly nothing, and in some way Jesus was in them by his spirit. And then when years went by, we found John, <laughs> and John said, you know, uh, these, these messages ought to be written down. They ought to be in pamphlet form. And he had his dad and brother-in-law to begin to pray about it. And so it wasn't long until his daddy had them printed, paid for them himself. We didn't have any money. We didn't have any money. But he paid for them himself. And we got these in print. I remember when I walked in the room the first time I saw them. I looked at them and I thought, oh, any sermon comes to me, why well, I'm so nothing. Oh, I just thought, man, I don't know what. I saw those messages printed, and I thought, oh, Lord, I failed. I've come so far short. I don't know how to preach. And here these sermons are in print, and I'm so little. So it wasn't long, you know, a few years, because we had found William way back in the lanes. Found him in the lanes, <laughs> 1948. Got with him back in the hedges in 63. <laughs> and so he had them on his desk in a few years. And your son, that was a rather uh, uh, need of encouragement, had trials and tests and disappointments in certain religious areas. So he came over to pray with him. And after they prayed, he said, what are those right over there on your desk, right over on that side, right over there? <laughs> But when he took them home, you got a hold of them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and when you got a hold of them, you started walking. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Start feeding her soul. It started to get right in her heart and just feed her heart, see and her sister and her family. And it wasn't too long until the Lord took us up there five years ago last March, and she could hardly believe we were there. She had prayed hard to pray us in the grant, but we got in to Muskegon. And uh, then Michael met Jesus. Oh, yeah. Michael met Jesus, and the Lord gave him the inner witness. 
in just <laughs> seconds after conversion to minutes. <laughs> and his dad, he'd been in the church 35, 40 years, and he hadn't, uh, he'd been hungry, but he hadn't been compelled in yet. But the Lord showed him. And so when he went home that night, he was so happy. Michael was so happy. Leon told me he's one of the happiest fellows he nearly ever saw. He was so happy, he could hardly sit still. And you know, that, that compelling of Jesus compelled him right in. Uh-huh. Yeah, it compelled him in. <laughs> Isn't that marvelous story? Oh, wonderful. It is. It is. This morning, the song, you lead it to me. I said, these you surely have done it to the years. You've led us. Oh, yes. To this, to yes. this hour. Yes. God's right. been leading us all through the years to get yeah. us to this time. Right. Trans- so Transform these and... lives. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and Leon met Jesus. <laughs> Michael met Jesus. <laughs> Kathy met Jesus. <laughs> Rick <Lord>. followed Jesus. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and oh, what a precious joy. And all the companions. Oh, please. Yeah, yeah, yes, 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 yes. It's so, so precious. Huh? What God has <laughs> revealed is a marvel, isn't it? <laughs> yes, because yeah. Michael, Michael, you see, found Carl. <laughs> And Katie, <laughs> found by Rick. Is that marvelous? Oh, what a And then Kathy found Mark. <laughs> and say, it, it, just what Jesus has in store for his people is, is very beautiful. Oh, yeah. And uh, see, it was uh, because the Lord had us out in the lanes. Praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. Morning. It was because of him. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, each time I try to go back and see where he has brought all of us. Because if we can praise him for what he's done, you know, why it could be he might do more for his glory and honor. If we can thank him sufficiently. First he's, of all. he's working way beyond what we yes. can see. Yes. He wants to get us to things that we can't even see. I have not seen nor ear heard, neither hath it entered into the heart of man. The things that God has prepared for them that love him. But they reveal to us by the Spirit. Yea, the Spirit searches the deep things of oh, God. Praise the Lord. <laughs> praise the Lord. Well, I appreciate that message so much this morning. Thank you. Thank you. So grateful. Thank you. Thank you. So grateful for your obedience. So, isn't that precious? <laughs> Amen. It just dawned on me when you came up. You see, it hadn't been for God working through Roger because God told me seven years, eight years this uh, December that he was to go with us. Hadn't been for that leading, we would have never found you in the lanes. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, God. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, it's wonderful. Praise the Lord. Well, we're grateful. Thank you. <clears throat> well, I really don't know how to say that, so Jesus will have to help me. <laughs> um, but I'm taking you back to last night when um, John got so under the anointing about Roger getting with Brother Helm. And I don't think we really heard that. I don't think we really sensed that God was really calling this man to be with Brother Helm. There are 11 people heard it. 11 yeah. in about 400, <clears throat> 500. God's been trying to tell us this for several waitings now that I've been in. God's been trying to tell us that Brother Helm needs Roger. Do you read the sign? Please obey the Holy Spirit. This is what the Holy Spirit was trying to tell us last night. The 11 persons could hear or heard a little or less. I guess the 11 heard very little. I can't quite heard comprehend stuff. all that's in this. I believe Jesus was trying to show, show me that his wife's health is even involved in this. If he can <clears> get <throat> to the right place where God wants him to be. Now, when I said that 11 heard very little, I... The Holy Spirit said, wait just a moment. Isn't that wonderful? Praise the Lord. So they heard just a little more than a very little. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, we, love we want to be very, very cautious about everything that I say. Thank you. <laughs> and the Lord was showing me. Now, I believe there was two people, I believe, John, was crying out for. But when God couldn't get it that way, the Lord was showing me that Roger is a missionary and needs to be put on the field. And that we as the churches have got to get this missionary to the field. Now, I don't know what you're giving to missions and where you're giving your missionary money. But I went to my pastor today and I said, Brother, 
you pray and what God tells us as a church to do, we will do. Whatever God tells us to do. I said, we want to be faithful. This missionary has got to be put on the field. He's got to be put there, folks. He's got to get. God's got to get the body where he wants him to be. See, Roger's not in the body where God wants him. And he's got to get there. Now, I don't know how you're going to work it through your churches and and, um, what difficulties you'd have in putting your missionary money this direction, but I believe... I believe there's enough missionary money in these churches that's involved right here to put this man where he belongs, where God wants him. I just, I just know there is. God was showing me this. And if each church will do exactly what God wants them to do, pray about it. I don't know what your missionary giving is in your church. I don't know. We just give in our church and ask God where to put it. (laughs) We don't have no particular missionary fund. We just say, Jesus, where do you want the money to go? And by his grace, we try to trust him. Sometimes we don't even have it. We just have to trust him to get it in. But if you have a missionary fund, you better pray where God wants them funds to go. You better get that money to the people that God's calling to the Pacific places. Now, he needs to be put on the field, folks. Can you hear this? We've got to get this man where God wants him to be because the body is out of proportion. It's crippled right now because Roger is not where God wants him to be. And I believe his wife is suffering because of this. And so I urge each of you as a church to take this upon your heart and say, Lord, what do you want us as a church to give? Pray about it. Let God decide what you want us to give to put this man on the field where he belongs. And God will bless you for it. I know God will. When we obey God, he blesses us. We can't outgive God. We can't outdo God. I found that out. You just cannot outgive the Lord. And all we have to do is obey the Holy Spirit. And through John last night, the Holy Spirit was telling us, oh, I sense the great anointing on him. God was trying to tell us, people, this man's got to go to the field. He's got to be put where God wants him to be put. And so I just trust today that you can hear this and that the churches will take this upon themselves, take Roger as their missionary. Missionaries don't have to go across the water to be a missionary. There's lots of work right here at home to to do. And God showed me that we have to get this man where he belongs. We have to get him in the part of the body. And who knows what will happen? Who knows what will happen in these meetings and things? If we could get everybody doing exactly the job that God wants them to do, to get exactly the place that God wants them to be. I tell you, this just thrills my heart. Glory to God. I tell you, I get so thrilled when I come in and look to Roger today. I said, oh, Jesus, you've got to get that man where you want him to be. It's just got to happen, folks. Now, we've got to do this. We've just got to do this. It's got to be done. We can't take no for an answer. It's just got to be done. We have got to do it. Who's got to do God's work? <laughs> but you and I. Who's he got to do it? The people on the street aren't going to put him there. The people that don't have the vision isn't going to put him there. It's going to be you and I that's going to do it. So we're going to have to do it. We just can't take no for an answer. So you men of God, you get to pray in your churches. How much money is to go from your missionary fund to this missionary to put him on the field where God wants him to be? I just pray that you'll be true, that you'll be faithful to this, because I'll tell you, don't ask for another revelation till you obey this one. Don't ask God to show you anything else till you obey this. God wants us to obey what we already know to do, people. There's so much that we know to do, but we're not doing it. We're going about doing the things we think we ought to do, but we've got to do what God wants us to do. Not what we want to do. Sure, it'll slay some of us. Maybe some of you are going to have to divert your missionary funds a different direction. Maybe some of your people aren't going to like it in your church. But do you always do what the people like? You've got to obey God. You can't please the people, churches. We've got to obey God and do what he tells us to do. The body has got to get in proportion to where God wants it to be. <laughs> Can you hear this? You've got oh, to hear it. Hear it. <laughs> we just got to hear it. Lord laid it on my heart to, to, that we had to start taking offerings in our church for a precious woman in our church that didn't have no income. God showed me this. God showed me the amount she had to have a week. I told our people up there, I said, if you don't give it, we'll take the next offering and the next one and the next one till we do get it. Because you can't leave this building till you give what God tells you to give. Amen. See, you've got to put up with me because you didn't obey last night. 
Help Jesus. Help. See, you didn't obey when the Holy Spirit was trying to tell you last yes, night. Yes, yes, we closed our ears. See, you just you just closed your ears to it, but God was trying to get a message across to us last night. Oh, yeah. We need to go tuned into it. We need to obey it. Yeah, so that God can go on and do some more work. He wants to do a lot of things. But these are the keys that's holding him back. These are the things that's holding the working of the Holy Spirit back. He isn't going to show you nothing more until you obey what he's told you to do. So I just give it out to you now, churches. You better obey. You better mind God or your finances might start and go backwards. If you don't mind God now. Oh my. I tell you, oh you my. better mind God. You better hear oh. this. Right. Or your right. finances can go backwards. God can take it away from you just as fast as he gives it. He can take it away faster. It can all be gone tomorrow. And that's true. I've seen it happen right in my own life. I tell you, he giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And I tell you, we better obey God in this thing. And we better get Roger where Roger belongs. So that the kingdom of God can go on. God wants to do some things. I tell you, I pray the Lord for this man. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him. What? He hadn't obeyed God. So I tell you, people, you've got to obey God. That's what you've got to do. we got to listen to the voice of God when he speaks. we got to get tuned into it. Please the blood over so it's on your shoulders now, and I just pray that every one of you ministers will take this to your board, to your people, whatever it is, or pray with a man of God. We just tell our pastor, whatever God tells you to do, brother, that's what we're going to do. Because, see, we won't have him if we don't obey the Holy Spirit. Right. We won't have him. God will take him someplace else to a people that will. And listen, if you don't get Roger on the field, God could take him someplace else too. Mm -hmm. If we don't get him where God wants him to be. Yeah. We have to obey God. I tell you, he only chastens us about so long, and then he'll move on. He'll get other people to do the work. If we won't give, if we won't do, then God will find someone else that will. Yeah. So we need to obey the Holy Spirit, what he was trying to tell us last night, yeah. and get Roger on the field. I praise the Lord. He's faithful. I tell you, he'll be faithful to you. I know he will, because I've always been faithful to my heart. I tell you, he... I tell you, I, I could write a book of miracles that God's performed for me in just the last four or five years. I tell you, it'd take a whole book to tell it all. But it's wonderful. God is faithful to those that obey him. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> they found her in the lanes. Praise God. Praise be Jesus. Glory be to God. Oh, great God. Jesus did it. Oh, we're so indebted to Jesus. Yeah. I just wanted you to know something. If you didn't, if you haven't gotten tuned in yet, <laughs> I turned to. Uh, I knew what was on her heart. The brother Helm didn't know, and Roger didn't know. Roger didn't know what was on her heart. And I turned to Tom and I said, now, you watch. As soon as she gets up there, you're going to see something out of Roger. You, he's going to be stirred up. And you saw him more stirred up than you've ever seen him stirred up. I said, he's going to really be stirred up because I knew it was so in order that when whatever was in her heart, he was in tune. That he was going to stir him up. And you saw what happened to him. you never seen him run around. He didn't know what was on her heart. Why was he running? Why? Because what God had laid on her heart was stirring him up so much he couldn't help but run. No, he didn't know about that at all. See, he was called to run. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. You see, that, that's not a coincidence. See, the, what, what was on her heart, the Spirit of God stirring him up, you saw him more stirred up than you've ever seen him. Why? Why, he was getting near home. <laughs> Why, sure, the message on her heart was getting him near home. He didn't know it. Uh, uh, he had a homing instinct in him. <laughs> and uh, I just want you to know, by God's grace, uh, I believe we need to believe it. Obey it. And, uh, I just, uh, Thomas came up and said, now what are the men tone fellowship supposed to give? And we started praying. And I, we prayed together here, and the Lord told me the men's tone fellowship will give $83.20 a week. Uh, a month. It's a week. It's a week. Eighty-three dollars and twenty cents a week. Eighty-three dollars and twenty cents. Not eighty-four. Not eighty-two. But eighty-three twenty. Are we to give ten percent of our income? I don't know. Is it another? I sort of felt like it might be. We've been giving oh, to the denomination. He just asked me, is it that I should give one? We should give one tenth of our income to this mission field. And he said, 
that we might and the Holy Spirit operate that you may. Praise the Lord. So we're going to give 10% of our income in Muskegon to this project. Oh, oh my. <laughs> Say that, Kyle. Say it out loud. I said, I told Brother Helm I'm so happy for him because it's going to be such a help to him. Amen. I, I know how he, how he covets Holy Ghost Fellowship. Oh, my. <laughs> We've been privileged upon occasion, but it, it, yes. it, his heart longs, and he's a lonely man, and the only thing that takes care of this long longing of his loneliness yes. is the work of the Holy Ghost. That's right. <laughs> that is so true. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God, the Father, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. We have to pray him into a home now. We've got to pray for a home in Parker. I wonder where it is. A hundred dollars a month. Praise the Lord. A hundred dollars a month. Thank you so much. Praise the Lord. Harrisburg just told me to pray about what the Lord would have them to share a week or a month. And also, Scott Depot sent word out for us to pray what they're to share. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Sister's like a daughter to us. My heart has just been pounding, and I've been rejoicing what Jesus is doing. And um, my heart is pounding. But the Lord has provided me about $200 a month, and it's been on my heart to give half of that to Roger and Virginia to help. And I think that's in order. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So wonderful. Just give half what she has. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Memphis Group will share the Lord helping $1,000 a year on his salary. Praise the Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'll take God to do that. I don't want to make it hard on Roger and Virginia. I want to plead the blood over them as I share this. But when John and I were called to this ministry for the short while uh, between the time that we were to come and the time that we moved, we were privileged to fellowship with Roger and Virginia. Yes. And I was so blessed and so helped and so lifted in their fellowship to know that we were in the place that they wanted to be more than any place else in the world and not to feel one slightest bit of resentment toward us. Right. Oh, that takes God. Wonderful. That takes a pure heart. Yes, in my heart. I, I, didn't, I didn't ask to be sensitive, but I can pick up things, brother. Yes. If things aren't just right, somehow I know it. And I felt so clear and so free with them. Amen. I was able to rest so in their fellowship. Yes. So this told me of their heart yes. more than words could speak. And You're I just right. want to praise the Lord. That's I have so much joy in my heart for what has happened here today. I just want to praise the Lord. Oh, that is surely beautiful. Surely marvelous. Praise the Lord. Could you hear that? when uh, Jan, uh, John and Janet were coming with us and the children, Roger and Virginia were just rejoicing, just so happy, just so thrilled that they were coming. Oh, just so delighted about it. And yet they would love to have been with us so much. Oh, so very much, more than any place, probably, by God's grace, because of Jesus, the fellowship of his spirit. But they were rejoicing because God would bring John and Janet and the children over. And it just, it left she could read and she could tell what that said by God's grace that's so beautiful oh it is it's marvelous it tells us much and we're so thankful for that marvelous praise the Lord <laughs> Lake of Nebraska one thousand dollars a year by God's grace now I know that God has in his some of his people he has ability to do this uh, and we praise the Lord for each of the little bodies that are sacrificing to do this but I know he has somewhere he has an abundance and uh, out of that we're trusting that God 
will some way be able to get into every heart and move in about this area. Oh, oh dear. Well, I was sitting there trying to do a little arithmetic, and I've been privileged, highly privileged, oh, to be treasurer of this re revival for our day for ever since we began. Fourteen years, month after next. And by God's grace, I'm sure my wife and I can give a thousand dollars, and so we're trusting. Oh my. Oh. 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 And he's on a little salary. He's underpaid. Most ministers are underpaid, but here he's his heart is so moved that it feels like they could. Just take a thousand dollars of what they have and put it on his salary. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I never was in a meeting quite like this. Were you? Every session is different. Every meeting is different. Praise the Lord. We're so injected. He sanctify and dedicate this, Father, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Yes, my brother. Praise the Lord. Yes, you know, hallelujah. <laughs> Jesus has uh, seen fit to allow some oil to be discovered on uh, parcels yeah. of ground. Yeah, wonderful. And the, uh, the portion that uh, I have, I would like that to go to Roger and... Uh, if Jesus needs more money for Roger, then I presume Jesus will put more oil in the ground. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The Lord said, be back here at 1230, not one. See, I thought in the natural, you know, my own mind, be one that give us a little longer time to rest. He said 1230. So we were back here. I was in this auditorium before 1230. Oh, Lord, help it, because that's what he wanted us back here, in this place. And then we weren't here too long until God began to work. I was inspired as it played, all hail the power of Jesus' name. And then we took off. Now, what if I hadn't called, how, what if Leon hadn't had the vision? And what if we hadn't called him? And what if we hadn't called Gene? Now, can you read? Are you able to read spiritual things? I have been convinced for many years if we could only find a people that would obey God in each church, just obey Him. Oh, you wouldn't need a program. The minister wouldn't preach. Oh, he wouldn't preach many times a year. There'd just be so much preaching going on through people that you never dreamed of. It'd just be rolling. And God had put sermons through events and through circumstances of all kinds. And there would be messages here and messages in Delvin written in the walls of the service. Amen. Why, it'd be like heaven almost on earth. You'd like a few people to obey the Lord in any congregation. Amen. My burden has been so few people are willing. And I know it's possible to get out into a certain kind of a spirit and think we're having a meeting. But it must be real. It must be of the Holy Spirit because if it's not of the Holy Spirit, it will not witness even though it looks good and seems marvelous and manifestations are in evidence. Must be led by the Holy Spirit. When it's led by the Holy Spirit, then there's life, there's power, there's joy, there's victory. There's something that's lifting all around. Everybody. The children get in on it. The sinners get in, they get hungry. They say, what's in here? I, I'm starved. So I tell you, I've got to get somewhere. Yes, sinners just are moved on. by the Spirit of God when persons of the churches or the persons that follow Jesus obey Him. All we, we need is obedience. Because when you obey the Lord, you're not going to have to have people tell you when to pray. When you obey God, He'll tell us when to pray. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah he'll have an obedient heart praying. He'll be praying, I don't know how much he'll be praying, in the night and in the day. The inner prayer, lots of the time, 
meditation. All the while. Maybe you're going to the grocery store. You're praying. You're crying. In the night, in the morning, in the day. In the life of obedience, there's prayer. There's communion. In the life of obedience, there's trust. In the life of obedience, there's the cross. There's self-crucified. The life of obedience, you see, requires self-denial. Breath by breath. Every breath must be self-denial in the life of obedience. Because if we don't, we cease the life of obedience and begin the life of self-assertiveness. And I'm convinced that the life of obedience has seldom been since the fall of the Garden of Eden. Consistently and continuously in a life, seldom, and that this is the plan of God, the plan of the Lord. That's why we have to go slow and be careful that we don't get into areas. They some mean well, but it's a, it's a strange spirit that they're in, and they don't know it. It's a strange spirit that has got a hold of them, and they think they're walking with God. They mean well, but it's been pressing too much. It's got into a certain mold. It's a certain crustiness. See, when it's with Jesus, it's, it's a sweetness, it's a gentleness, it's a love, it's a tenderness, it's a patience, it's a quiet, it's not much talking, it's a lot of living. And so my cry for many, many years has been to find a people that would obey the Holy Spirit, that would walk with God from morning to night. I've been striving to find them. I said at the age of 21 years, if I could find 12 persons that would obey in everything what God wanted them to do, he'd send an awakening that would last till Jesus comes. I was only 21. I'm 60 and a half years now. So that was said quite a while ago, almost four decades. And uh, I've not changed. In the convocation, well, I can't tell you. I started to say, he said, don't say that. <laughs> no, don't say that. Praise <laughs> Jesus, thank you. Praise Jesus, thank you. Praise the Lord. So he wants, he desires, it's his will that we be obedient, everyone. Not just one or two or three or half a dozen, but each one obey the Lord in every minute detail. My girls, my daughters used to say to me 27 years ago, Daddy, why? Why are you so careful about all these little things? They couldn't understand when they got up, you know, maybe 10 or 12 years old. They didn't notice it until they reached the age of accountability. They didn't notice it. I want to tell you, when your children reach the age of accountability, if they don't go with God and you walk with him, they'll be irked with you. Now, if the children, when they reach the age of accountability, go with God, I tell you, they're so close. But if they don't yield and go with God, then they don't understand and the enemy fights with them and you have little problems and trials and battles and struggles. But if they surrender themselves continually, and they've got to continually do this, because the spirit of the school will take them right into it, sweep them right into that carnal thing. But if our children isn't committed to the Lord when they reach the age of accountability, and the father and mother walk with God, it, it, you've got a battle going on. It just moves in all directions, just like this. But as soon as a child is committed to the Lord, he can tell in his heart that mother and daddy's walking with Jesus, and he's just so thrilled, but when he doesn't pray or read or obey, then he gets right in that wrong spirit, and it just starts again. Bang, 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 up and down. You've got all kinds of problems, or some problems. Now, that sure answers a few questions. <laughs> Every father and mother that walks with God. The children, if they accept the Lord and go with the Lord, it's wonderful. But if they don't, you've got a cross spirit. And that's the way it is in a home. If the husband or the wife, if either one of them walk with God and the other doesn't, it makes it difficult. And that's where the one that walks with God must be long-suffering and patient and not pressing, but sweet. So God grant us wisdom to know how to walk with him 
to win the dear ones with us that don't understand that they uh, are in darkness or in disobedience. You see, each one that's in disobedience, living in disobedience, you see, is in conflict with those that obey. They don't mean to be, but they just cross up like a cross. See, everyone that's under a cross crosses with everyone without the cross. And the enemy and the powers of the air and the flesh is striving always to get every person that is walking with Jesus into a seeking of things and manifestations or over into the self-life or to get them back into the reins, you see, and Christ back on the cross. There's all kinds of spirits that are wrestling, trying to defeat us. No wonder Jesus says, narrow is the way. Few there be that find it. You see, there's so many influences that are trying to get us sidetracked. So we have to pray continually not to get into wildfire fanaticism. Ideas. After you walk so far with God, if you're not careful, you'll get into certain areas and there's a break in the mind. It's a break in the body, in the nervous system. Then the Holy Spirit, you see, if we get so far, then the Holy Spirit is grieved by conversation or by other areas of prayerlessness. And you see, it's possible to pray and pray wrong. Because there is praying demons. Ibarra ran into them. And there are religious people that pray certain ways. I didn't realize it, but Mother and Dad Barr told me that when I, my wife went into our home uh, 22 years ago, 23 years this December, that there were certain Christian people praying that we would lose our home and lose our car. So it's, you see, praying, you can pray certain ways. And they prayed that we would lose the, the home and the car so the people could see that we weren't walking with God. They were praying, and I said, why, brother and sister Barr, I said, they're actually praying that you will lose your home and lose the car. <coughs> so there's all kinds of praying spirits. And we have to pray and obey God or you get into spiritual error and do not know it, do not recognize it, and that creates problems in homes and communities and churches and wrong reactions. And people react. And you take uh, persons that react when praise is going on. Uh, for instance, uh, Brother Ronnie and I was having a wonderful time praising the Lord one time at a church. And we've had more than one church. But we got into a little praise meeting. Yeah. And dear ones there thought, thought that we grieved the Holy Spirit by praising God there. I believe that's true. Yeah. Because they told the pastor, they felt that we grieved the Holy Spirit by praising the Lord like that. And we were just so happy trying to praise Jesus and praise him, praise him. We didn't, I didn't know much how to praise him, but I was trying. And Ronnie was a whole hearted in it. I mean, he was the whole work, the whole thing in his life. He was a, working at it just as hard as, as uh, any football player you about ever saw, trying to make the, the line. He, he was working just as hard praising the Lord with me. And that, and that precious one, they thought we were out of order praising the Lord. So there are all kinds of praying spirits. There's all kinds of reactions of, about things. And so we have to be very close to Jesus and love him so that we will not grieve him or grieve anybody else that's walking with Jesus or put pressure upon them. So it's wonderful to trust him. So we do need prayer uh, for wisdom to know how to release and accept and apply in these opportunities and requirements. Praise the Lord. Someone said, how do we avert and how do we avoid these strange spirits, strange, this spiritual air? We can only avoid it as we wait upon God, reading his word, 
praying and inwardly dying, inwardly denying self and obeying the Holy Spirit, waiting and going slow, and then checking with God's men and women to see and set your spirit and check with them. Because you see, each time through the years when I would receive a revelation, say 30 years ago, I would check with men of God and see how the Holy Spirit operated with them before I went any farther. See, there are younger people that started and they don't check. They just go on and they think they're on the right way. And before the long, we've got problems at home. We've got problems in the community. We've got problems in the school. Problems in the church. Because we must go very, 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 very slow with God. And not go out and say, oh, we can do this. We're going to do it. I'm, I, I'm able to do this. I, I've, got, I've got something. No, we just go real slow. <laughs> Only slower, much slower than that. See, it required years and years and years of waiting before we ever had waiting upon God. It required uh, over 23 years of waiting personally before we had a waiting in Elkhart for three days upon God. We started waiting upon God in 1941 and 42. And the long waiting that Mary Webster told me I was to be on because Jesus revealed it to her took place in 66. So it required years of waiting, years of waiting, trusting, dying, praising the Lord, doing his will, not our will. And when she gave me the order for the revelation that we were to wait somewhere in a hotel with the people of God, with the saints, she said the saints of God, that's what she told me. She said, God has revealed that you are to wait three days with the saints of God in a hotel somewhere in the United States. And I said, why, Mary, I'm too little, I'm too small, I'm not able. This service is continued on cassette number seven, side A. Thank you.